Welcome to our Sabbath school, and today we're going to look at um, some wonderful points from God's Word. We're looking at um, this wonderful Sabbath school lesson, which we're going to get into the parables of Jesus, looking through the book of Mark. And um, also, don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and let others share in this wonderful blessing, which we're going to get into today. You know, Ben, uh, this chapter 4 is literally one block of Jesus' teachings. Mm -hmm. Between all these things, uh, there would be a bit more in chapter 13 of Mark. It's his uh, Mount of Olives discourse. Mm -hmm. But here in chapter 4, Mark brings essential teachings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is just like one block that we're studying here that yeah. illustrates what the kingdom of God is. Because mm -hmm. notice Mark starts with saying, Jesus came to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And now in this chapter, he's going to explain mm -hmm. what the kingdom is, how the kingdom grows, mm -hmm. and the essence of the kingdom of God. Right. But before we dive in, let's pray. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time. And as we get into these lessons of Jesus, Lord, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and, and help us to understand these things. Help us to understand these symbols and understand the real message of which Jesus is trying to teach us here today. So we ask for your guidance, your leading, and your wisdom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's get into the parable of the sower. In Mark chapter 4, we have this parable lined out here from verses 1 through 9. And he tells a whole story here. Um, basically, he says um, there's this whole crowd around him. And again, another great multitude. When you go through the Bible, you often see around Jesus always a great multitude. We also see a picture of that also in Revelation. Fun fact. And he begins to teach. And so he teaches by parables, these stories, these lessons, which are um, basically stories with symbolism, which teach a spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. right? um, he says, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. So there's a sower and he's sowing, right? And these fowls of the air, these birds devour up the seed that's put down. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But then when the sun was up, it scorched the plant, and because it had no root, it withered away. Next, some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and it choked the plants, and it yielded no fruit, so they died too. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit, and sprang up, and increased. And there was different varying harvests, or fruit, of these plants. Some uh, yielded uh, varying levels, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And then Jesus, he emphasizes, Okay, he that has ears, let him hear. So those who can listen, those who can understand this, let them hear. Because Jesus was revealing to people this truth and through symbols. A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much immediately soil. Immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. And immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And since they had no root, they withered away. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know, Ben, as you're reading this, notice Jesus does not give explanation. He mm -hmm. just gives a parable. Just the parable first, yeah. And uh, before we start looking into what it means, mm -hmm. we may even get critical, like, come on. Mm -hmm. If you're a good farmer, mm -hmm. why would you throw your seeds mm -hmm. on the road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you throw your seeds in a rocky ground when you know you're mm -hmm. not going to go and harvest? Yeah, it'd be almost considered wasteful. Right. <laughs> Um, but we'll come to this. Uh, another thing that surprised me in saying, well, is this really an allegory because hundredfold? Mm -hmm. And so I had to do the fact checking. And for sure, mm -hmm. the wheat, yeah. one seed, mm 
Mm -hmm. produces up to 110 kernels. Oh, interesting. Because so, you have five heads and each head has up to 22. Oh, so okay. from one seed, you can have hundred. the wheat branches. could have five branches, five yeah. heads produced oh. with 22 seeds per each. Oh, wow. So if you really have a bumper crop, mm -hmm. you could have that hundred fold. Oh, wow. I've spent my first seven years in Canada on the farm in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. wheat and canola. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it's unforgettable how uh, unpredictable the harvest is from year to year, mm -hmm. depending on the weather. Mm -hmm. You plant the same crop, but one thing we did mm -hmm. before planting the seeds, mm -hmm. we picked the rocks. Yeah, oh, yeah, rock picking, I hate yeah. that job. <laughs> but here, um, he just plants it, plants mm -hmm. it away. Yeah. And so it's a picture of Christ. He's the sower, he would explain later on. Mm -hmm. And so the first illustration of the kingdom is mm -hmm. the seeds of the kingdom of God are where? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. They're Think everywhere. of that. Mm -hmm. The seeds of the kingdom of God are yeah. present everywhere. everywhere. Absolutely everywhere, yeah. And that's, that's a lesson that I hope the audience reflects on. There is no place where God does not put his word. Right. Yeah. There's no place where God's spirit is absent because the environment is not good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have to check the environment of our heart. We do. Yeah. How receptive we are. Gotta but the kingdom rocks. of God, the seeds of the kingdom are present everywhere. So in the, the following verses coming up, Jesus, he actually gets into the explanation mm -hmm. of what it all means. And um, he says here in verse 14, the sower sows the word. So the seed is the word of God. And by the way, he says about how, know you not this parable, how then will you know all parables? So when we understand one parable, it unlocks also other parables. So this is important, this explanation. So the sower sows the word, and these are they that, wait, that fall by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes, so the fowls of the air represent Satan and his demons. And he takes away the word that was sown in their hearts, and the hearts would represent the land. So the seed, the word of God, goes into the heart. But before it can get into the soil and really germinate and take root, Satan and his demons, he influences people to set aside, to reject the word of God. And there are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So they're ready, they're receiving, they're excited. But they have no root in themselves. And we could spend time just on this point here, having no root in yourself, not rooted, right? And so they endure for a time, so for a space of time, they seem to be growing, they seem to be healthy. But then, uh, and then, then affliction comes, or persecution, some trouble arises, and they basically leave. They leave, leave the truth, they don't accept it, they just become offended, and they drop what they learn, they drop what they accept. <clears throat> and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the thorns, Jesus describes as the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and lusts other less. And these things, they choke the word. So you may know the truth, you may know the word, but if you're so engrossed in the things of the world and in lust and, and, and in pursuing riches, then you set aside the word of God, irrespective of whether you know it or not. And they, um, they, they become unfruitful. So they don't bear good fruit. So good works, even the fruits of the spirit, they don't bear uh, character, the Christ, uh, Christ character they don't bear, mm -hmm. right? And then, these are they which are sown on good ground. So the good ground, so those with a good heart, well-prepared hearts, they hear the word, they receive it, and they bear fruit to varying degrees. So notice, Ben, that Christ identifies himself as a sower. Yes. Because he sows the word. Christ is the word, and so the gospel is very clear. Christ is the sower. Yes, he is, yeah. You know, when we're in Lincoln, Nebraska, Mm -hmm. with the boys last year on our cross-country tour. Mm -hmm. uh, we stopped to see the Union College there. Yeah. But we also toured the city. And as we drove to their um, main building, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the government building, how I yeah. call it, the capital okay. of Nebraska, yeah. I was surprised to see the, the, the statue on top of it. Yeah. Guess what it was? Oh, it was like a sower. A sower, okay. I like never see that on the yeah. Capitol. Yeah. It's actually a statue of a sower. Oh, religious. So it's like yes. not just a farmer. That's cool. And it's yeah. it's beautiful because yeah. uh, we're gonna put this on the screen for the viewers to see. Yeah. So that metaphor is there in their 
state capital, yeah. the image of a sower. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful picture because it should motivate us mm -hmm. to be sowers. Right. Just as Christ was sowing his kingdom, we should be that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sowing the kingdom of God, yeah. spreading the seeds of the kingdom mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Notice how lengthy Jesus' explanation is of yeah. both the rocky ground and the weedy ground. Mm -hmm. Jesus takes extra time to explain and warn yeah. the trouble yeah. of rejecting his word. Mm -hmm. Because the kingdom of God grows from what? Yeah. From the word, word, from yeah. what we hear. Yeah. It's something that grows in our hearts through our understanding. Mm -hmm. And that kingdom is here and now. Yeah. It grows because of the word of God as we embrace it, as we allow that word mm -hmm. to make changes in our lives. Yeah. The kingdom becomes real. Yes, it does. All right, let's go into uh, verses 10 to 12 because in verses 10 to 12, basically Jesus explains why he's teaching in parables. He says here, um, uh, and they, when they were alone, they that were about him with the 12, asked of him the parable. And he said to them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So Jesus' inner circle, they had received um, greater explanation and instruction. Those who are basically outside of this or outside of that core group, they were getting parables just as they were. Mm -hmm. And this was to basically reveal truth in sort of a, a mysterious way that only could be known by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, we're looking at this, Ben, this word mystery is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Greek word, mysterion, mm -hmm. which would be translated into Latin mm -hmm. as sacramentum. Oh, interesting. Okay. Sacrament. And so Jesus, if I put in that term, says mm -hmm. my parables mm -hmm. are the sacraments of the kingdom. Oh, the cool part about it is, supernatural cannot be experienced through physical senses because it is supernatural. Right. And so when you use the symbols, mm -hmm. then by faith, you're inviting the supernatural in your life. Mm -hmm. So Lord's Supper mm -hmm. is a mystery. Mm -hmm. Baptism is a mystery. Anointing is a mystery. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying that his parables are, this are also a mystery. Mm -hmm. When we take them to heart, Mm -hmm. When we, by faith, apply these parables into our life, mm -hmm. we're inviting the supernatural kingdom of God and His presence yeah. into our life. And we are, which is so important. Yeah, we, we dwell on these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I find interesting that Jesus quotes here from Isaiah chapter 6. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. verse 12 is a quotation mm -hmm. from Isaiah chapter 6 and if yeah. you read Isaiah 6 9 through 10 yeah. you would see the the parallelism there yeah. and the interesting thing is mm -hmm. Isaiah went through his life he was already a prophet mm -hmm. but life was usual mm -hmm. and then his cousin mm -hmm. Isaiah dies mm -hmm. and he's broken in grief and it's in that moment of brokenness mm -hmm. and perhaps humility and grief and pain mm -hmm. that his eyes are open and he sees God and throne high and lifted up. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful picture of worship there in mm -hmm. Isaiah 6. Mm -hmm. And it's through that that comes this response. Do you have it ready to read from Isaiah? Oh, I don't. Uh, let's, let's read it. Go and tell these people, be ever hearing but never understanding, be mm -hmm. ever seeing but never perceiving. Mm -hmm. Make the heart of these people calloused make their ears dull and close their eyes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears. And you see how Jesus quotes it here in Mark. Yes. Seeing that they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Why, why do you think Jesus being so sarcastic? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like, I don't really want them. Mm -hmm to be saved. Is mm -hmm. that really a picture of Jesus? Oh, no, no. He wants everyone to be saved. So yeah. what's happening here? Well, he wants people to not just have this um, this knowledge base. My belief is that he doesn't want people to just have this knowledge base or this intellectualism where they know the truth, but they don't really live it or have it in their heart. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he, Jesus could describe everything to everyone totally perfectly and whatever, right? Giving the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And But that just because of sharing that knowledge of that base doesn't mean they're going to convert or be healed. 
They might have big brains, but they want to have large hearts for Christ. So their yeah. preconceived ideas, their mm -hmm. calloused hearts, yeah. their hardened hearts, mm. is what making them not see what's obvious in yeah, them. That, yes, that's right? true too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because notice, parables are not abstract things. Mm -hmm. Jesus appeals to real things like this plant here, okay? Yeah. He's using things that they see in everyday lives that should mm -hmm. make it simple to understand. Mm -hmm. But he's basically saying, mm -hmm. if your heart is just like that rocky ground, yeah, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. As we get into the, the following verses and what Jesus gets into the next parable, which is the parable of light, which is talking about la the lamp. So he says, and he said unto them, is a candle, we can say even a lamp today, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. And then he says again, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, the candle of the lamp, it's a symbol, right? So if you understand the Old Testament prophecies, kind of understand what um, Jesus is talking about here too, right? Um, there's a there's a Old Testament quote talking about the candle and how, you know, Jesus should, or God should light up my candle. He should light up my life, right? Um, and I like that verse too, personally. So, but the thing is here is that it's barely regarding the truth. The candle is the truth. The light is the mm -hmm. truth, right? And um, are you supposed to just hide the truth? Or are you supposed to just um, obscure it? No, if you have light, you want to share it abroad and have it to be useful, right? If you hide a light, it's not useful, right? And there's something else going on here, Ben. Yeah. Um, I have this tendency to cross some words where I think translators miss mm. the point. Yeah. Um, the lamp is brought to mm -hmm. be put. Mm -hmm. In the original, you would be surprised mm -hmm. because the lamp has come. Okay, instead of being brought, it's come. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a difference, yeah. And, and so the word used there is uh, erketai, mm -hmm. which is actually active mm -hmm. coming. It's not uh, brought in. It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. the light comes. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's significant because who is the light? Jesus is. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Should we hide Jesus? No. If you've got Jesus, mm -hmm. his place is not under the table. Mm -hmm. His place is high and lifted up. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that parable is indicating that Jesus again is proclaiming himself that if the kingdom is to become reality, mm -hmm. he has to be yeah, he has to be lifted Shining. up. Yeah, right. And it's not only just like lifted up in like uh, words or in like teaching or something, but it's more than that too. Because the Lord is supposed to light our candle. That with Jesus, He's supposed to light us up. The Word of God in our hearts, that light of truth, mm -hmm. is supposed to be exemplified in our life. Mm -hmm. That's how we lift Him up primarily. Yeah. And and so when you look at this again aspect of the kingdom, mm -hmm. it invites us to consider that Jesus is making it simple. It's not mm -hmm. complicated. Yeah. He's using household examples. Mm -hmm. He's using things that they experience in everyday life, and he's giving to them added meaning. Mm -hmm. The next one, he's talking about the measuring mm -hmm. bushel, yeah. or measuring basket, or whatever measuring. And his comment is, was the same measure you use, mm -hmm. it will be measured to you. Mm -hmm. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Mm -hmm. This is kind of faint reflection on Jesus' parable of the talents. Mm -hmm. Those who multiplied, yeah. more was given. Yeah. Those yeah. who hid, and notice again this issue of hiding. Mm -hmm. Do you hide Jesus? No, we shouldn't. Would you hide Holy Spirit working in you? No. No, that's a blasphemy. Mm -hmm. To suppress the work of the Holy Spirit, to hide it, not to give credit to the work of Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is a blasphemy. Yeah. And so Jesus is challenging us here that if we receive a measure of blessing, mm -hmm. we should also we should give that measure to, to others. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so these parables are very, very um, literal, practical. Because that's something they could relate to, they could understand, because it's everyday experience. So let's get into the parable of the seeds. And it says here, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should, uh, should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knows not how. 
For the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So, let's stop here. Who grows the seed? It could be the Holy Spirit. But in real life, do you, does the farmer grow the seed? No, 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 it just no. comes up itself. Yeah. And this is the emphasis here in verse 28. The earth yields crops all by itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is huge, Ben. Mm -hmm. This all by itself principle, mm -hmm. that is what used in natural church development. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked with you about the NCD principles. Yeah. Because the kingdom of God does not need you or I mm -hmm. to help it grow. No, it just goes. The kingdom of God mm -hmm. grows all by itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want you to get it. This is simple, yeah. and yet this is revolutionary. Mm -hmm. How does it start? The Word of God is the seed right. that once planted in a community or in a person mm -hmm. begins to grow. Mm -hmm. Who grows it? God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it grows all by itself. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So what is our role here? Is to plant and let God water. Mm -hmm. Not to be weeds mm -hmm. and not to be stones. Mm -hmm. Stop being a stumbling block yeah, exactly. for the Kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Because many of us, mm -hmm. with our preconceived ideas, mm -hmm. we're just like those scribes and Pharisees and everybody else around mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. who were hindering his work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. literally, if we take the obstacles away, mm -hmm. things will begin just to grow by itself. Yeah. You know, we have a beautiful plant here. And you could notice certain things in it, right? Mm -hmm. What is that? Sprout. Sprout. Yeah. Did we cause it? Nope. No. Could we stop it though? Mm, you cut it off, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, we could block it, mm -hmm. we could cut it, we could restrict light, we could restrict humidity, we could, you know, if, if this would be smaller, mm -hmm. it would not mm -hmm. grow. But with this, you it, know, it, 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 it sends them out. Mm -hmm. It sends them out. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's a beautiful parable because. The vitality of the kingdom of God mm -hmm. is within the word, within that seed. Yes. Yeah. And what's expected of us is just to give that response, mm -hmm. to be the ground, to allow it to grow among us. Yeah. And it's a beautiful we, picture. It is, yeah. And then when we grow up and we have that full development, then he says that the harvest comes. Mm -hmm. right? And this harvest coming is another powerful statement. Um, verse 29, mm -hmm. when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in a sickle because the harvest has come. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take our readers to a little prophecy of Joel. Joel, okay. Chapter 3. That's the same prophet that talks about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, when he talks about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? We all know chapter 2. Yeah. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and daughters, prophesy and so on. Mm -hmm. Look at chapter 3. Yeah. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my And so, yeah. as we read this whole, 13, uh, jump to verse harvest. 9. Oh, verse nine, 9. Even there? Okay. Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. So we're talking the end time events, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's in this context you have verse 13, as you mentioned already, right? Yeah, where he says this is a harvest here in verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats, overplo the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And so notice, this is the imagery that mm. will be used in Revelation chapter 14, mm. two harvests. Yeah, two harvests. Put in the sickle, Yeah. and then there's the vine press. Yeah. that is full. Mm -hmm. And so why I'm bringing this up? Mm -hmm. Because in his parables, mm -hmm. notice how Jesus loads them with meaning. Yeah. He brings the kingdom. The kingdom grows from his word. Mm -hmm. It grows all by itself. Yeah. And the ultimate culmination of his kingdom is what? 
Is that the harvest. full blown harvest? Yeah. The harvest. Yeah. So you have this harvest of the righteous is gathering of them, mm -hmm. but then you have this crushing of the grapes, which is the destruction of the wicked, mm -hmm. right? Gathering and destruction. And so as we look at these teachings of mm -hmm. Jesus here through the eyes of Mark, yeah. we have to ask ourselves, are we ready for the harvest? Yeah. Another thing too is are we patient enough? Because James five, verse seven to eight, says, Be patient, right, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman or the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. So Jesus is waiting for this, this fruit to be born, this character to be born. And then at the same time, you have us to be patient and to develop this over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is the one who will produce the harvest, yeah, right? Yeah, it's not of your own self. And, and notice the gradual growth of this. First, mm -hmm. the blade, yeah. then the leaf, mm -hmm. and after that, the full grain in the head. Mm -hmm. And at each stage, it's mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. to recognize this growth process yeah so it doesn't go from like one to four it right. goes through a process yeah. right yeah. and so same with our christianity same with our discipleship same with our mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. we are to grow from that germinating seed mm -hmm. to little plant mm -hmm. to eventually ready for harvest yeah and yet all that is the work of holy spirit in our lives it's not our work yeah it's being responsive to the word and the Spirit of God in our lives. Yeah, which which actually, like, there, there are certain requirements ne that necessitate growth and mm -hmm. development. And if you don't provide the right nutrients, you don't provide the right environment, then you can stunt growth, hinder it, or kill it. Right. And so that's another lesson for us today. If we want to experience all stages of that growth, which is outlined here in Jesus' parable, we got to give the Word of God. we got to have that fresh air. we mm -hmm. got to have that, that life of prayer. And we have to also be, you know, cultivated and pruned, right? Which means that we're going to reflect on our life and live the life of Christ. Amen. In our Mission Spotlight video, it takes us into the past, mm -hmm. into the 1939. And it's a story of a mission doctor. So watch it with us. In late 1939, Dr. Arthur Geschke accepted a call to serve as a medical missionary in Southeast Asia. He, his wife, and their infant son left San Francisco on a Japanese liner headed for Thailand. Dr. Geschke's assignment would be to develop a clinic in Phuket, an island off the country's southwest coast with a population of some 50,000 people. After learning about the church's work in various locations, Phuket's business and civic leaders offered to support the establishment of the clinic. On the clinic's opening day, Dr. Geschke performed surgery on a seriously ill patient. The man had been turned away from a government hospital and was told that nothing could be done for him. Geschke won the full confidence of the community when the patient recovered. Within a month, the clinic was treating 60 outpatients per day, and the 15 beds it had set up for outpatients were continuously occupied. It seemed that practically everyone of importance in the city knew of Dr. Geschke and counted him as a friend, a mission administrator reported a few years later. He added, they told us of several people he had saved from death and about the great good he had done. The United States entry into World War II in December 1941 brought the thriving work of the Phuket Mission Clinic to a halt after just one year of operation. Dr. Geschke contacted the British consul in Phuket and received instructions to arrive with his family at the beach in 10 minutes. There, they were picked up by a British vessel en route to Singapore. The ship was buzzed by Japanese dive bombers, but they did not attack, probably because the captain had ordered the British flag to be removed and replaced with the flag of Thailand, an ally of Japan. The Geschke family and other missionaries boarded the last American freighter out of Singapore before that city was captured. The ship sailed south to Cape Town, South Africa, since a Pacific crossing was deemed too dangerous. Part of the crew deserted in Cape Town, but the ship proceeded to cross the Atlantic, sailing in a zigzag pattern to escape enemy torpedoes. It arrived safely in New York two months later. Phuket Mission Clinic, later known as Phuket Adventist Hospital, reopened in July 1949. New structures have been built over the decades, and the hospital services expanded. Renamed Mission Hospital Phuket in 2002, it's an 83-bed hospital operated by the Southeast Asia Union Mission. After retiring from full-time medical practice, 
Dr. Geschke moved to a mountain home near Yosemite National Park in California, United States, and continued to practice medicine on a limited basis into his 80s. He died just shy of his 93rd birthday. Dr. Geschke spent his life in service to others, and his legacy lives on to this day. For more stories about pioneer missionaries, visit encyclopedia.adventist.org. Father in heaven, we thank you again for these lessons, these parables that Jesus has given to us through his word. Lord, I ask that you please help us to take it to heart. Lord, I ask that you please implant within us your word, that we may bear that holy seed and form Christ within us. Lord, I pray that that mystery of godliness will be revealed in us, that you please help us to experience that full development, that you help us to grow up into men and women after your own heart. Lord, we ask for your blessing and your leading and guidance here, and we ask for your infilling of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.